Hello everyone, my name is Christian and I'm a software developer here at AGI. Today I'm going to show you how to use SDK Parallel Computing with SDK Analyzer. So here we have a sensor optimization scenario. This is included with your Analyzer install um, and is also accessible via the SDK Data Federate. What this scenario is showing is a satellite in low Earth orbit going over the polar caps in the Arctic, um, taking some measurements over the area using a simple conic sensor. Um, what we want to do is see how changing various attributes of the satellite's orbit um, as well as sensor properties can affect the measurements um, that are being taken. So to use parallel computing, first you're going to want to go to Edit, Preferences, and then click on Parallel Computing on the left here. Um, and then at the top, you can choose between Local Parallel Computing, which will use the cores on uh, the physical machine that you're using currently. Um, or you can change it to use a cluster. Um, so you can point it to an existing SDK scalability coordinator install on the network um, that's using different SDK scalability agent machines um, to leverage more than one computer. So for this first demo, we'll just use local mode. And so this will use the eight cores on my laptop here. Um, and if we right click on our coverage definition, you'll see that we have two options. We have compute accesses, which will compute coverage uh, the way you might be used to doing it, or compute accesses in parallel. So if we click compute accesses in parallel, um, you'll see at the bottom of the window here, I have opened the job monitor. You can open this window by clicking the third icon in the parallel computing toolbar up here at the top. Um, and you'll see at the bottom here that submitted 32 tasks um, and computed the coverage definition. So if we open our uh, report for that coverage definition, we can go to the Report and Graph Manager, and we can go to our Grid Stats report and generate that. Um, and this gives us some of the different properties of the coverage definition that we just computed. At the bottom here, we have uh, minimum, maximum, and average values. What these numbers tell us is the amount of time that the satellite was looking at a particular point. Um, so the minimum value across all points is zero, meaning that some of the points in that grid were not looked at at all. Um, some of them were looked at for a maximum of 662 seconds, and others were looked at for 219 seconds. So looking at these minimum, maximum, and average output values here, if we want to optimize these numbers, um, we can change an input uh, parameter for our satellite. Uh, so if we open our satellite object here within SDK, we can see its different properties. So for example, if we wanted to see how varying the inclination value um, between, say, 70 degrees and 120 degrees would affect those minimum, average, and maximum output values, we can change that property here, recompute the coverage definition, and recompute the report. Um, as you can imagine, doing that with a single input value at a time can take a while and is a lot of, a lot of clicks and a lot of steps to take within SDK. Um, so to improve that, you can use SDK Analyzer to select a single input and vary it over a range and then see all of the outputs at once. So instead of changing the inclination here, we're going to use SDK Analyzer to do so. So to open Analyzer, you can go to the Analysis uh, tab up here at the top, click on Analyzer, and then Analyzer. So here we have SDK Analyzer. Um, I've already selected my input and output variables over here on the right. So we have our satellite inclination as our single input variable. And then we have our minimum, maximum, and average uh, output values for our figure of merit for the coverage definition. So to perform a parametric study, I'm going to click that button up here at the top left. And then I already have a pre-saved computation that will uh, vary the inclination between 0 and 180 degrees, um, taking 10 samples, which gives us a step size of 20. Um, I'm also going to give outputs to the minimum and average values as well. So I'm going to run this trade study. And as you can see, it's taking you know, a little bit amount of time to get started. And now it's actually computing the, run the 10 runs here at the bottom, you can see. Uh, so as each of those runs completes, uh, we'll see a point populate on this 2D scatter plot showing the maximum value. And then this table in the background here uh, has the each input value along with the three output values. So to compute 10 points here, 
Uh, that took one minute and 45 seconds, uh, which is quite a long time for 10 points. So to speed that up, we're going to leverage SDK parallel computing. To turn on parallel computing and analyzer, click the gear icon here at the top to open the SDK analyzer options menu. And at the bottom, click this compute in parallel checkbox. So now we don't have to do anything differently. We can open up our saved trade study. And again, copy over our additional outputs here. And this time I'm going to compute uh, the inclination varying between 0 and 180 degrees. But instead of taking 10 samples, I'm going to take 180 samples. So that gives us a step size of about 1 degree. So when I click Run Now, this is going to leverage the eight cores on my local machine here uh, to do the same computation but in parallel. So instead of computing one point at a time, we're going to be able to compute up to eight at once. And you can see here, even on the 2D plot, these points are populating much more quickly. So here our computation for 180 points finished in 1 minute and 10 seconds. So that was 35 seconds faster than computing only 10 points uh, in non-parallel mode. Uh, so here we did 18 times the work in you know, a little over half the time. One more time, we're going to run our parametric trade study with an analyzer, uh, this time using cluster computing mode versus local parallel mode. So here I already have configured a, a cluster of 60 cores. Uh, so we have our inclination variable as our input that we're again varying between 0 and 180 degrees with 180 samples, uh, giving us a resolution of about 1 degree. Um, we have our three uh, output variables, minimum, maximum, and average time here. So as I click Run, uh, we will kick off 180 uh, tasks will be sent to the coordinator and distributed across our agent machines on the cluster. You can see the progress down here in the job monitor within SDK. And in the background, these values are populating very quickly. Uh, so we are actually almost done with our 180 points and just finished. And that only took 24 seconds. <laughs> Um, so as you can see, that is a significant uh, improvement, uh, especially uh, anytime you're doing a parallel computation on a cluster, the first time that you start those worker processes on the agent, there is going to be a little bit of overhead to set up the parallel computation, and then any future runs after that will be uh, significantly increased uh, with once those processes are running. Most engineering problems require some sort of iteration uh, as you're trying to optimize and compare values over different runs. So using parallel computing with an SDK is a great way to uh, speed up your computation times and really take advantage of the resources that are available on either your local machine or your network of machines. Thank you guys for watching, and for more information, check out AGI.com.